Hey, it's Neil Parfit here. Hope everybody's having a good summer. I've been sort of MIA, sort of sleeping in the sun and uh, traveling and stuff, but uh, sort of back in the studio, so I thought I'd make another video. Although I can't find my tripod, so this is uh, handheld, gorilla style. Um, this video is just a quick overview of uh, how global chains work. Um, there were a few questions on the forum about it, so I thought I'd just make one really quick. So, normally when you're working, if you're on a channel, uh, your chain is your signal going left or right. If you, uh, you know, add a mixer, you can go into that, and then you have another chain, and they're all sort of self-contained. The only um, signals you can sort of globally grab, um, no matter which chain you're in, if you go to your inputs, and that's like your your audio ins one to four, and then all your CV ins, A, B, C, D, as well as your gate inputs, and also your output that you can write back into itself. Um, if you have a custom unit, you have local controls. So if I had, uh, if I had a custom unit, <laughs> nice tree. If I make a custom control here called, I don't know, I'll just use the default linear one. Now, if we go into this, and let's say I have a unit I want to modulate, like a parameter I want to modulate. If I go to locals, now I have that one additional linear control I can pick from. But what is this global, the mysterious global? So all that is, if we go to um, the admin area and we go to global chains, these are CV or audio signals that are available anywhere within the system and they can be whatever you want. So let's say I was processing a sound and I wanted to process that sound in parallel. Maybe I wanted to lay on it. I want to add a quantizer to sort of crush it up, but I want individual control of that effect. Yeah, individually, sorry. So I'm gonna add one sample player in a global chain. So I'm gonna say new mono chain. You could do a stereo chain. I'm just gonna do a mono. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, Amen, or yeah, Amen, or Amen, or whatever. And I'm going to load a sample player within this global chain that has the Amen break. So I'm going to go to Sample Player. I'm going to assign a sample, load sample. And I think it's in here somewhere. There we go. Select that. It's loaded into the pool. Hit enter again, now it's assigned. So we should be, we have signal, it's in this global chain, and it's just sitting globally in the system. It's not assigned to anything. It's just sort of running in the background by itself. So now what makes this great is anywhere, I could be like, oh, I wanna tap that signal. So I could go mixer um, within it. I can now choose that sample player as a signal source. So if I go to my usual input source assign, here's our normal inputs. Nothing in locals because we don't have a custom unit. But if I go to globals, now we have that Amen signal. I'm probably saying it wrong, but whatever. So now if I hit this, oops, there we go. So now I have that sound coming through this mixer. So I could add an effect here if I wanted to. Uh, what do we got? Maybe I'll add a filter, why not? So let's say I have this uh, low pass filter as one effect. I could then add another mixer. I could tap off that same global chain. There it is. And I could add a different effect here. Maybe I'll add a pitch shifting delay. So now I have that signal feeding two different mixers being processed completely differently. And if I go back to the admin area, into that global chain, I can change this up to whatever I want. And anywhere that that signal is being tapped in the system, this, this new updated signal will feed all those different places. So it could be 
a sample player. It could be a clock source is a good example. If you wanted a whole bunch of different units clocking together to the same pulse. Um, it could be a, a CV, like an internal generated CV signal, like an envelope perhaps. If you had like a really complicated, uh, you know, synthesizer voice and you needed like an ADSR feeding like 20 different parameters at the same time, you could have, instead of using 20 different ADSRs and setting all those up, you could have one global chain with that ADSR and then that could feed all the different sources. So you're actually saving a lot of CPU power, you know, using one CV source instead of sort of duplicating that process all across the system. So this is an example of using this as a clock. So I'm gonna go into my global chains again. I'm just gonna ignore this online break thing. I'm gonna go add, and we'll go new mono chain. I'll just call this clock. Enter. So here's my clock global chain. There's nothing in there. Now, if I go in here, let's say I add a sine oscillator. And I'm just going to slow this down to like one hertz, or pretty close to it anyway. So now we have this waveform. So let's say on channel one, I had like a tap tempo or something, just an effect sitting there. Uh, where is it? Try to find it. Tap tempo. So instead of feeding this tap locally, I could assign that tap to be controlled by that global source, so or that global chain. So I'll just go to my usual input assign, go to globals, there's my clock, and there we go. We have our one hertz tap. I could be on channel three, and I could have something completely different, like a, uh, a clock delay. So we could feed this clock parameter that exact same global parameter, uh, or global chain. So there it is. So this clock delay on a completely different channel has that exact same clock. Two different places, it could be in a sub chain, it doesn't matter where it is, because it, again, it's tapping off that parameter globally. And of course, if I go into the global chains, if I speed this up really fast, anywhere that's being read in the system will speed up instantly, because it's reading that exact same data. So. Lots of applications to use this. Uh, of course, there's no rules, so you know, use it how you see fit. It could be an audio source, it could be a looper, whatever. Um, it's up to you to experiment and figure out how you want to use it. Um, obviously, you don't have to use it all the time if uh, whatever your patch is doesn't call for it, but uh, it's just another avenue to move signals around the 301 very easily. So uh, that's it today. All right, take it easy.